Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. And today we're going to do real talk. So it's so good to be here, isn't it? Today I have an incredible guest. And my guest today is none other than Hello, Virginia. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> so good to be here. Excited about today. <laughs> yes. So all of you who are joining, please, this is going to be interactive. If you have any thoughts, if you have any questions, by all means, I'm going to open it. You can ask anything. Uh, this is a little bit far, so I may not be able to see. Hi, Mark. How are you? Uh, this is going to be an incredible session for all of you who are going to join us. And for those of you who are watching it as a replay, by all means, please let us know it's a replay. And if you are here live, say hello, emojis, whatever it is, right? That's right. We like the interaction. So the more <laughs> feedback we get, the, the better fun we have, I think, right? Exactly. The better we communicate. Sure. So what is girls with no fun? That's right. Girls <laughs> like to have fun. Yes, definitely. Right. So today is going to be an incredible session. We're going to be talking about women, women's wellness, women's finance. And it's not only women, it's everybody, right? Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, I love the fact that we talk about women, but uh, women impact men, men impact women. It's important that we learn how to communicate with each other and what things mean for each other. So um, I think men should take better notes than women, but definitely women, keep your eyes and ears open. <laughs> <laughs> so we met, what, about two years ago? We met about two years ago, and then we disconnected a little bit, and then we reconnected through a fabulous female corner. Yes. Great organization to be part of. And uh, the fabulous, be that's right. Uh, it was business life and then fabulous female corner. And since then, I have not let you go. All right. We've been uh, leached at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the emojis. Not only leashed, but we have found um, how to collaborate. Yes. Yes. And I think there's a unique uh, energy amongst us because we're so passionate about, you know, very similar things, women, children, our community mm. empowerment. And I think it's just, it's natural for us to really align and come together and bounce ideas off of one another that could impact so many people, both on social life and family and everywhere else. Right. And I, I like the word uh, collaboration. And collaboration does not mean that it's a networking, but collaboration is we come together for the benefit of someone else. That's right. That's right? right. It isn't necessarily um, for the purpose of gain, but it's to give back, Serving. pay it forward, it's to serve. And the universe at the end of the day, it just it, it's a of full course. circle. Not today, not tomorrow, a month, a year, 10 years. It doesn't really matter. You just kind of do what you need to do and just release it off. And I bet you have experienced the same thing when you pay it forward. What is it that they say? It comes back mm -hmm. tenfold. Absolutely. I yeah. have that, yeah. <laughs> and it's true. It is. So for our viewers, I'd like to introduce to you um, Virginia, but you've been in business since 2000. 2000, for 20 years. 20 years. Almost 20 years. March will be, two, will be 20 years. March 2020. Mm -hmm. Can you believe we are entering a whole new decade? No, I hope your vision's ready for it. <laughs> I hope you're ready for it's it. It's a whole decade. Yeah. It's not a year. But now that I think about it, I'm, okay, I'm going to give my age, but I know I'm already past half a century. So when we think about it, it's like a whole century. I, it's, it's, an, it's incredible. Since you gave it your age, I'm going to give up my age. Today I was uh, helping a client in the morning and I was putting her date of birth in some uh, process. And I'm like, wow, this lady's 40 years old. She doesn't look it. I'm like, holy cow, I'm 40 years old. <laughs> like you, you forget. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a great thing because you tend to be so involved with life and you're, you're so present in, mm. in the now that it doesn't matter how many years go by, but it's important that you understand years go by, right? Exactly. Not only years go by, but what we do with our years, yeah. what we do with our days, what we do with every opportunity. Uh, there is that beautiful saying, it's don't count the days and the moments, make each moment count. count. Yeah. That in itself is so profound. And if we all take that into consideration, because 
anything can happen in a split second. Uh, when we wake up every single morning, we don't think at night that tomorrow I'm going to wake up or not. We just expect to wake mm -hmm. up, open our eyes, and do what we had already planned to do. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So, and that in itself is a trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trust. So many people, many of my clients who come to me, they say, I lack trust. I don't believe. But we trust so much. We mm -hmm. trust to wake up. We trust if our dog is there. Uh, we trust the mailman to bring the mail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hours may change, but there mm -hmm. is so much trust that when you go to the supermarket, there is food. Mm -hmm. So your business, uh, go ahead and you share with our audience what is it that you do, and then I will ask how you got into it. So um, I love what you said about trust. And I think part of uh, trust in life is also having faith in things. Mm. Sometimes you just need to have faith in the process. And I think we give up way too easily uh, because we don't understand that life shows up no matter what. You can plan, but life has a different plan. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that your dreams, your goals, your admirations, they don't come uh, into reality, it just might show up in a different way. And because it could show up in a different way, we disregard it because it's not the way that we anticipated. It's not the way that we're looking for it. It's like, you know, have you ever driven somewhere and maybe you've taken a wrong turn? And although you, your map initially said that you were, you know, the destination was going to be on the right because you went the wrong way, then found your way back, it ended up on the left. So it's the same thing, you know, just because initially you think it's going to be on the right hand side doesn't mean that it can't sh show up on the left. So if you're so busy looking on the right, you don't see what's happening on the left, you're going to feel that you're going to lose faith. You're going to lose trust. But if you have trust and if you have faith in the process, mm -hmm. you've got to look, you know, both ways. That's why I ask, I hope your vision is together for 2020, because I believe that this coming year uh, or in, in the past years have been a tremendous amount of preparation. And no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, you've prepared. Uh, for what, for how much, for how long, in, in what sense, I don't know. That's something that I think we'll figure out. And what is it that we are supposed to be prepared for? I don't know, but whatever it comes, you're going to be prepared and you just got to trust in the process. So when I, when I first started in the industry, um, I'm in the financial industry. Perfect. So uh, <laughs> part of what I do is I'm a certified financial educator. So I help families um, go from dreaming to actually achieving their financial goals. Um, a lot of my clients refer to me as a uh, financial travel agent. So <laughs> I, <love laughs> and what that that. Means is I, I figure out where you're at, what your budget is, where you want to go, how long the time frame is to get there and how long you want that vacation or that dream or that destination or that lifestyle to last. And it's all in the preparation. You know, it's like we expect to have overnight success, but it's the little things that we do on a daily basis. It's that latte. It's that budget. It's the, you know, change on the cushion. It's, it's the, oh, I don't care. It's a dollar here, a dollar there. And, you know, when you add up these numbers, it's incredible because you have a formula. I, I do. I, I love do. that formula. Would you please share our formula? I do. The wealth the, formula? The 30 day. So, formula. yes. Yeah. So I, I uh, part of what I do is I, I speak to my clients and they always yeah. tell me, Virginia, you don't understand. You don't understand my situation. For the past 20 years, I've been told almost every time I don't understand. And for the past 20 years, 99% of the time when we're set there, I get the feedback once they go through that 30 day cycle, they don't understand. They think we don't have money or we think that we don't have enough or we think we don't make enough or we think taxes are too high or we think it's our BS. Right, right. It's BS is belief system. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So it's, it's our belief system yes. and what we believe becomes reality. Because it serves us in the yes. now. Because you don't want to feel bad about where you are financially. You don't want to feel bad about where you might not end up. We all mm. have goals. We all have dreams. But we believe in the BS. <laughs> we have the BS because it serves us. And out of all the things that we go through in life, all the ups and downs, the last thing that we want to do is do something that doesn't serve us. So we want to believe in something and we hold tight to that belief, even though it's a false belief. So what I have my um, partners, my clients do is I have them go on a 30 day journey, starting with seven days. So I tell them, okay, challenge me on your budget. Challenge me on um, what I'm teaching you. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me it doesn't work. No problem. I've heard it. I will entirely look into your situation. So what they do is 
I literally give them a, a log and they have to log in what they're spending money on in the next seven days. Oh, that's everything. difficult. Everything. You're everything, pumping everything. Even a gas. You're pumping gas. Coffee. You buy Apple for $3 at the gas station or $1.50, whatever. I want you to write it down because wow. it's the little things that skip our mind. It is interesting. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share something profound, Please. which I was like, I can't believe this happened. If 20, 30 years ago, Starbucks or, or you know, the, the creator of Starbucks came to you and said, Lisa, let's be in business. I need, I need about $100,000 from you. Let's open up a branch of Starbucks here in LA. You'd probably look at that person and say, you're out of your mind. There are plenty of coffee places already. I mean, gas stations, uh, office, ever, nobody's going to buy premium coffee. Coffee beans are there already, right? The market's already, you know, full of coffee makers, right. coffee shops. And yet we look at Starbucks and Starbucks didn't reinvent coffee. What Starbucks did was they actually added a place to go in your life. Think about it. It's an experience. Think about it. Going to Starbucks is an experience. So they added that. So it's interesting ah. because most people today, they took coffee from home or they had a cup of coffee at work, but they'll go to Starbucks before they go to work. At lunchtime, they'll go to Starbucks before they go back to the yeah. office. In the evening, they'll gr uh, grab a cup of gel before they go home. It's as if Starbucks completely changed your lifestyle. Starbucks completes me. <laughs> Another BS, right? <laughs> Another one. So that's just the, the way it is. And if you calculate that, it's insane because now I'm, I'm a coffee lover. Those of you who know me, I'm, I love my cup of joe, but I don't joe every day, right? Um, and I, yeah, I don't, What's well, joe? cup of joe. Cup of coffee. That's what we refer to. No, I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't know. Maybe I'm, I'm not, not a Starbucks a person. <laughs> I don't go there. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not asking you to give up everything that you enjoy in life and become a nun and not do anything fun, not do anything that kind of gives you that, oh, I need my, you know, relaxation and my coffee is that. But if you just track your seven days and you mm. do that for one week, and if you have the courage to do it for one more week, and if you're truthful and you finish the 30 day cycle, you'll actually see that we waste anywhere from 10 to $20 a day. Yes, I know you're saying no way, not me. I'm pretty good, but just do that. And you'll see 10 to $20. That's 300 to $600 a month. That's $3,600 a year that could actually be working for you. And instead you're just how about the other away. formula? On day one is one dollar. On day two, yes. Oh, so once... when she told me this, I did it for one month. I couldn't. I, I forgot the next month. But what a powerful formula! Is yeah, that? I mean, think about it. We don't think about the one dollar, the two dollars, or three dollars. So for for my clients that say, Virginia, I can't do that. I can't do what you're asking me to do. My, you don't understand my schedule. My business is too hard. So I ask them, Can you save? a dollar for each day of the week. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, what do you mean? I say, well, when it's the first of the month, you save $1. When it's the second of the month, you save $2. If it's the 10th of the month, you save $10, $10. and so on and so forth. And if you do that, you save a dollar right. based on what day of the month it is. Correct. You're going to have close to about $500 at the end of the month. What a formula. Yeah. And so many people take that for granted. Uh, Virginia, there are many clients of mine who come to me that are smokers. They will smoke a pack or a pack a day. And I'm not talking about the real mm -hmm. hardcore smokers. So that's $10 a day. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, it's about minimum of $7 a pack mm -hmm. to some cigarettes are $10. So that's $10 a day. That's $300 a day smoking mm -hmm. at a way. Wow. Yeah, when you look at it like that, it's profound. Now, isn't it? Yeah, and and we get we get uh, uh, pushed back to, oh, you know, you can't take my cigarettes away, or right. you can't change that habit. But the the dollar a day based on the day of the month is a huge, huge yes. game changer. Because, I mean, if I say if I tell you to save five hundred dollars a month, you're probably going to say that's a car payment, that's a this payment, right. that's a I can't do that. That's not in my budget. But yet, we pay Starbucks, we yes. pay cigarettes, we pay everybody else. And at the end of the day, when there's a challenge that can't be met, I always say, hey, who do you work so hard for anyway? So, you know, financial education starts with us, knowing your priorities and your goals in life, your financial goals in life. It has to start with us. Nobody should care more about your money than you. So even me, I'm here, I'm sitting, I'm, you know, talking to you guys about these things. But um, I know if I didn't change my own financial future, 
if I didn't get out of debt, if I couldn't pay off my mom's house, if I couldn't do the things that I did to secure my family, I would never be able to have the freedom or the flexibility to have choices in life. At the end of the day, we want to be financially secure so we can continue having choices that matter in our lives. And if you don't need the money, maybe a nonprofit organization, right. maybe an institution. And I know you're working with, you know, women who are, are um, uh, battered women, uh, abused women. I mean, we, we tend to stay in situations that are not healthy for us, mainly because financially, not all the time, but not mainly the because time. financially we're strained and we don't have the courage or the comfort to feel like we can make it our own. So money well, matters are so important. So understand. many of us, especially in our culture, in the Armenian culture or the Middle Eastern culture, mm -hmm. Even the Hispanic culture or the Asian culture. I mean, in the human so culture. In the human culture. <laughs> the human culture thinking, right? It's like, oh my God, there's just more cultures that are like that, that a girl stays home until she is married. So, father usually takes care of finances. Right. And mom tends to take care of either she's out working or taking care of home. And the daughter then gets married and then it's usually the role of the husband to care for the finances, the home, uh, the buying. And of course, nowadays everything has changed. There are so many women who are entrepreneurs, yeah. uh, business executives, CEOs, CFOs, kudos to all the women. There are more business owners more that are than ever before. Ever before. More businesses are being opened by women than Thank ever before. You. It's it's Thank you. Thank you. And yet we still see the part is that they are not money savvy. Right. I'm talking about money savvy, not business savvy. Mm -hmm. So you sacrificed uh, a lot to be where you are. Yeah. How many women can sacrifice or have the support system to be where they want to be? Would you share your beginning? Um, absolutely, Lisa, it, it, and it's and it's so true. I think um, women uh, tend to wear many hats. Yes, we and, do. And we, we tend to wear the hat, uh, not the hat that makes us happy, not the hat that fulfills us, but the hat that we're expected to wear. Um, and it's interesting because when you step out of that role and you choose the hat um, and you teach the people around you that that's your hat, they value what you do even more. So I was only uh, 19 years old when my dad passed away mm -hmm. and he was the breadwinner of our family. We had just bought a house. Um, so we had the mortgage payment we had at 13 and a half percent, by the way. Yeah, back then. Wow. So my family was left behind because they weren't educated financially. So they did whatever the loan officer told them that was available for them. And maybe mm -hmm. that was true. I don't know. But they certainly weren't financially savvy or educated, mm -hmm. but they had a dream. They came to this country for that dream. And I feel like so many of us go after that dream, just working hard, not working smart. We never pick up our heads to look around to see what else can I do that could fulfill this goal or this dream uh, without putting us in a world of hurt, you know, hurt um, without spending all our time working and not getting fulfillment out of the work that we do, out of the goodness that we do in, in service. So um, when my dad passed away, I was only 19 years old. And I was just having fun like a normal 19 year old does. And I was going to PCC, um, Pasadena uh, Community College. College. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't really doing anything. I was just taking some fun classes. I took sewing. I took, you know, Spanish because I took French in my high school and my uh -huh. dad criticized me for that. So I was like, all right, fine. I'll take Spanish. Um, and I was just having fun. I wasn't really doing anything serious because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I wanted to go into law. I wanted to become an attorney, but I wasn't sure, at, you know, how or what. So um, I was just having fun with life when um, I had a part-time job. Uh, I was a telemarketer. Um, mm. I got a call from my brother-in-law back then, and uh, he said, you need to come home now. Dad's at the hospital. Dad's at the hospital. I saw him in the afternoon because my classes had gotten canceled, so I went home, had a cup of coffee with my dad, and he took the day off. That was the day that he went to his you know, a doctor. He had an annual review for his health. The doctor told him, you're healthy go home, nothing wrong with you. And that same night he had a stroke and he was gone. So needless to say, our life changed quite a bit um, to go from, you know, um, having somebody who you love and you cherish and you hold to the highest value. My parents have always been model parents. They've mm. always been, my mom's always been straightforward, straight shooter. She'll never say 
what's not on her mind. My dad's always been the, couldn't you say that later? Hold on a little bit. Let's see her side of it kind of person. And, you know, growing up, yes, I was a daddy's girl. Like most girls are. My daughter today is a daddy's girl. I'm of course she that. is. Um, and, you know, we went through a lot of struggle because we were not prepared. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't have life insurance. We didn't have savings that could help us for the next six months for the mortgage. Like I said, my dad was the breadwinner. My mom was a hairstylist. So she made money on the go. Uh, saving wasn't a big priority to her because money was coming in from dad's yes. income. So if we needed extra money, she just cut more hair. If we needed to, you know, save a little bit more, she would just work a little bit more. So saving for her was never a priority because there was money coming in. It was the extra expense. Thing. Right. She yeah. was, it was just the icing on the cake, if you will. Right. She did our hair. So <laughs> it's important for, for us to know that. A couple of months after my dad passes away, my mom falls in her own kitchen. She has a herniated disc so bad that she's pretty much paralyzed waist down. So when, you know, it's like when it rains, it pours, right? And uh, during the same time, about a couple of months later, my sister's daughter uh, got diagnosed with the rarest virus. Uh, she was, I think, the, the fourth kid in the world who had it. And the flu virus, just from a flu, she started having wow. seizures and all these things. It went to her brain. She had to have open brain surgery. So it's like for the... I don't know, six, eight months. It's like every time somebody Snowball. called, we just expected bad news. We expected bad news. Nothing good was going to happen to our family anymore. Nothing good was out there anymore. We were all a victim all the time. So this kind of thinking came about um, when I realized, well, we're about to lose a house. Mm -hmm. um, I can't pay for the house. I keep putting it on a credit card. By the time I was 20 years old, uh, between student loans and credit cards, I had over $50,000 in debt which was huge, of course, huge. So I just decided, you know what? I don't want my parents to lose the house. Uh, what am I gonna do? I have a younger brother. Um, I don't want him to grow up in the streets and I'm so proud of him. Um, I, I decided to do something and step up and I decided to put my life aside. Um, to so go the out girls there step do... aside and you put the hat on right. of becoming the business person. I didn't know that I was going to become a business person. I didn't know I was going to do anything like that. Right. So I went to, I took a nine month course and I became a paralegal uh -huh. and I thought I would make enough money to be able to kind of engage and pay the bills. That wasn't enough. So I kept my part-time job as a paralegal, uh, not full-time paralegal, part-time telemarketer, worked at Macy's on the weekend. So uh -huh. I had three jobs from 19 to about 20, about 21. And I stumbled upon, um, you know, a world financial group from an associate or, or from a friend, actually, friend to me, a cousin to my husband right. uh, on April Fool's Day. And I thought that would be incredible because I thought he was joking. I thought he was lying. And um, he said, no, they're, they're, this is a place you can, code, you can go and learn. And I said, listen, I don't have any money. So if you're going to sell me something, literally, I'm, I'm broke. And he's like, maybe that's why you should come and take a look at it. Um, so then I go first time, second time. I finally made it the third time. Um, and what I learned was, keep an open mind. What I learned was, you don't know what you don't know. What I learned was, your experiences are only true to you. Mm. And it doesn't mean that there aren't experiences outside of yours. Our box. Yeah. Our so comfort zone. I didn't know what I was getting involved with. I didn't want to be in the business. I just wanted to learn. And six months after being in the business, I decided to give some of the principles that I was learning through the process uh, and take it upon myself and use it. And little by little, I started doing that. And within a year, I paid off my debt. Uh, within a year, I was able to refinance my own mom's house, cut the payment in one third the amount. It's just, it's, it, was, it's, it was an incredible journey. But I had to step out of my comfort zone, even though I was very uncomfortable with what, what life had given us. Of course. Um, I cried almost every night because my dad was my world. Um, depressed, went from a size 12 to a size 2. I look like a stick. Of course. <laughs> It's not, very healthy. Anxiety. it's not very healthy, of course. but you go through that journey. And I think, you know, because of the, the courage that I borrowed from the people around me at the time who kept telling me, you're going to survive. You can do this. You're going to make it happen. You had a support system. I did. And because of that coalition, because of that right. support system, you know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. Mm. So I didn't become who I am today just on my own. It's impossible. And I love what you're doing with, you know, social media, because the more people can, can find courage in others, if they can do it, so can you. If they can do it, nothing special about them. There's something special about you. Certainly, why not you? Exactly. It just creates that, it makes that scary journey um, a little bit more doable because it's been done before. And I think if you and I could help each other 
and we can, you know, pay it forward and help others understand that people have been in a worse situation. My, my story doesn't make me special. My story right. doesn't make me, I don't know what, but it, it's, it's just a story. And I bet a lot of our, you know, viewers here today have stories that are much more tragic than mine. Uh, Some do. And that's one of the things that I teach, not only here on live, but with my clients. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have a story. Yeah. But what do we do with our story? Yeah. Do we take that to empower us? Or do we repeat that story? And the more you repeat that story and feel as if that story embodies who you are, then we we cannot move outside of that story. Mm -hmm. So to embrace who you are, you have to, what I call it, evoke mm -hmm. what was, which is, yes, become aware of the story, bring it up, just cut it up, and then realize it's a history. Mm -hmm. It is not happening at this very moment. And that story moves us forward mm -hmm. as it did yours. You're not crying about that. I mean, it's like when we say we miss, I miss my dad, you miss your dad, but if they were in the other room or here, things do not happen to us, but for us. Absolutely, I'm a firm believer of that. Right? Absolutely. So you are who you are because of the circumstances. It's like things mold, we can sit and cry about it, but after a while, it's, we need a helping hand mm -hmm. and a support system mm -hmm. to take us to the next level. Absolutely, because you know if you spend, and it's such a dangerous zone to be in. Yeah. Uh, because it's not constructive. It is it is very um, victim oriented. Of course. And one of the things that that I learned early on is um, I I I I I don't want to be a victim. Uh, if you. I'm a victim, that means I somebody else. Yeah. Somebody else has power over me, and I yeah. choose not to give anybody that power. Um, growing up, I've always been a tomboy. I played hockey. Growing Woo! up, yes, this tall lady played hockey, so I was. You never, are tall. I we was, are sitting in a way <laughs> you have no idea. I'm sitting on a cushion, <laughs> and I'm on flat. <laughs> but I, you know, I was chased down by my volleyball coach in high school, uh, you know, basketball coach, and I, I never liked those sports. I liked hockey of mm. all the sports. I was on skates, on blades, on bikes, on mountains. I was scraped. I was. You're constantly moving forward. I was, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> So I, one of the things that I learned was, you know, I was doing things that a lot of my girlfriends were not doing. Right. Majority of my friends were boys. So, you know, I, I learned to, um, I don't know, be tough, if, if you yes. will. But it doesn't mean anything because you don't know what these lessons in life are bringing you towards. Mm. And I think it's so important that we look for lessons in life. I'll tell you, I, I miss my dad every single day, but because I miss him, it's taught me to value the people that I'm around Beautiful. even more today. Because how many chances do you get? I don't know how long my mom will be around. I don't know how, how long my in-laws will be around. And I think it's a beautiful thing to have parents. And some of, of you might not have your parents uh, right. um, anymore. And some of you might just live in the memory of you know how wonderful things were. But if you live with their memory and you live with the things that they taught you in the today and you leave a mark with others with who they've taught you to right. be or who they've influenced you to be it's such a greater um fulfillment it, it really it is. is so my dad um as we're sharing as friends my dad used to say he had this saying bariki bariki in farsi what for and why hmm. and I didn't realize I mean he would say be content with what you have you have a roof over your head that's good enough you have a house that's good enough you have a job why do you need more why do you need to build more mm. constantly he was like more of keep it safe mm. keep it safe keep, keep it, it safe keep it simple don't go big don't become bigger uh, you don't need to do all the things that you are doing uh, why do you need this nonprofit? why do you have to create all this right until i realized what if I shift that mm. and empower myself with the same thing? What for and why? Mm. Because the greater need. Absolutely. Because I can Absolutely. serve more. Mm. 
if I'm doing one on one with my clients right here, but if I am on stage, if we are live on Facebook right here, yeah. and this goes on YouTube, if we serve more than one person, mm -hmm. we've done our job. I would not have been able to go through my days if mm -hmm. I did not have my why. Beautiful. If I yeah. didn't have my why. And you know, what's interesting is once you discover your why, um, it changes. It does not have to be the same. Exactly. Because when I was not married, my mom, wa my mom was my why. My brother was my why. Yeah. Then when I got married, I was like, wow, how do I take care of my family and, you know, the family that I um, left behind? I mean, I didn't leave them behind, but you know what I mean, right. after you get married. So it, it changes and it has to change because you change, you evolve. Things don't mean the same thing to you. I love what you said. Don't take it in a negative way. Find mm -hmm. something positive. He was teaching you to find your why. And if you find yes. your why, when people reject you, when they don't believe in your dream, when they don't. When, you're, when they think your goal is too big or they tell you to get realistic, I tell them, that's not in my definition. I don't have that in my dictionary. I've torn that page out. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what realistic is. Right. What real to me is it's when, what's in my head. And if I can picture it, that's half the job. Beautiful. That's half the job. So I think- again, Embracing the reality right now. The, the it doesn't matter if it's good oh. or bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. with that, you know, I was at, at an event called Serp X mm. with many. Okay. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was powerful. So many incredible people that came from foster family. Mm -hmm. I mean, Manny here himself came from foster to CEO, right? Right. right. Incredible from being goodness. an orphan to CEO. And there are so many who've been destitute. Some people say you're destitute to be poor, you're destitute to be this. And they are entrepreneurs now, they making seven figure, eight figure. It's not the goal, what you said, stepping up, but finding your gift. Mm -hmm. We all are gifted. Absolutely. It's finding our gift, then the mission and becomes real. And then once we have a mission, we have to set the mission, uh, vision, That's right? That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, women and wealth. Yes. That's you put this event passion. together. It's your passion. <laughs> passion. But also there is a mission statement right. Before, right behind it, right? My mission statement is to transform because transformation begins when we heal within. I help my clients heal within mm -hmm. to embrace all that so that they can evolve. So your mission statement, now you're stepping up. You're creating bigger wealth not only for women, women wealth is one aspect of it. Now you're stepping up into bigger stages and yeah. creating something bigger. So before we finish, we're almost at the end. Um, may we take questions? Sure, absolutely. Before we finish, what can you share about your next stage, your next phase in the new decade? So what is um, to come for us? For me and our audience. Absolutely. So in 2020, we're um, having a huge expo. It's not a conference anymore. Uh, and it's going to be 10, 10, 2020. So yes. It's October 10th. It's a Saturday, 2020. You don't want to miss it. Um, <laughs> it's going to be an expo. And um, I created Women in Wealth because in the beginning, I wanted to have something to give back because we have so many stay at home moms. We've got so we many uh, career driven women who set their career aside for family, for part-time something, to be available, to be at home, to be so many different places, to wear so many different hats. I bet you if we unveil the hats, we'd have like a collage of hats <laughs> that we're wearing. And I'll tell you, nobody's better than multitasking than women uh, because True. we're always, our minds are always, you know, it's always working. It's always wired. It's always going from here and there. And yeah, I know you don't, put in 100% when you're multitasking, but it's just, it comes naturally to us. Many compartments. Yeah, many compartments. And we're always going at it. We're, we always remember everything, right? Your poor husband can't remember why you had a fight, but you remember what happened five years ago, right? <laughs> it's always our minds working. So what I wanted to create was an opportunity, um, uh, an environment for women to find courage, to find uh, enlightenment, to find opportunities, coaching, to find that big push, to find that big sister that they've gone through with, they've been right. through with, to find a professional atmosphere where you no longer have to have a, a have to have that feeling of being a victim. I'm going to take all that away. 
and I'm going to watch to see what's your BS. <laughs> Aren't you loving that? I love that. I love that. What's, what's that story that you keep buying? And, you know, I read a book once um, and it taught about finding your um, uh, better self. It, it talked Beautiful. about how do you, how do you cast that? How do you find your better self? And then it talked about, you know, uh, trans, uh, trans going, moving into the future, which mm. I thought was a little kooky, moving into the future and going to, uh, to, to time travel and, yes. and finding your best version and trying to copy that in today's world so that you can, can get there faster. You so you can that visualize that and live that. I realize that a lot of that has to do with how you hypnotize yourself. That is absolutely true. And there's nothing holding us back. If you do have that best self vision, um, what does it look like? What would have that person done? If you don't do that today, maybe you can kind of plug in and substitute what they could have done. So Women in Wealth um, Expo, uh, where we expect, you know, women in wealth, women in health, women in business, women in entrepreneurship, women in giving back, all women, all types of all walks of life um, right. and we're gonna have a lot of panels we're gonna have a lot of discussion uh, opportunities for you to get to know what you don't know what do you need to move your business to the next level and what do you need to move your nonprofit to the next level what do you need to give back whatever you need we're even your personal figure out. absolutely self-esteem your confidence your absolutely. health your wellness from we're the gonna find yes we're gonna it's have like a three e in women's wellness there together. you go we're gonna have you find that missing gap and we're going to make sure that you have the partnership within that event to make sure Amen. that you can get you there without it costing you anything. Right. And that's important. Again, I'm taking another, I don't have the money BS away. <laughs> that's right. So it's stepping up for yourself and realizing that if you thought you don't know what your mission is, what your vision is, you will come to explore possibilities. Absolutely. And you never know, you never know, you might have thought, hey, I thought I was an assistant to attorney, I was gonna be an attorney, just mm -hmm. like you. And then my body broke down and stress took its toll. And that's how I went to hypnotherapy. And now, since 21 years, I've been practicing this. So now I'm going to step up the same way. And I think 2020 is like 2020 vision that clarifies your mission, your gift, and realizing that you do matter. And no matter what you do, either you're at home, you're at work, uh, you're a cook, you're a chef, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Or the CFO or a CEO of an organization. And with that, I want to thank you for this empowering money, personal, finance, everything. I mean, the full hand, right? We <laughs> educated, we talked about health, we talked about family, we talked about finance. And can we, can we, we even did a little bit about playfulness in here. Yeah, so it's, it's like this happy thing. Yeah, you you and it has to come full circle, right? And, and a lot of times, the hand, the hand yeah, and a lot of times women have a difficulty in, in kind of juggling and uh, balancing, I should say. That's why we're overwhelmed. There's no balance. It really in life, there's no balance. It's a full juggle. I I have a 17 year old son and a 16 year old daughter, and God bless them. They're just they're just wonderful. But it's a juggle. Sometimes it's a little more, it's a little less, but it's a juggle. And you don't have to feel like you're giving up your personal life for your business or your business life for your personal, so long as your mind is aligned with your family goals, with what you want in life. And it's just, this has been great. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Guess what happened? We got <laughs> our energy just <laughs> was so high, it killed the battery. <laughs> so uh, welcome back. If you are here, please get on. We're getting our emojis. Wonderful. Hey, Mark. Hi. So we were talking about playfulness. And as we talked about playfulness, as I said, <laughs> my battery died. <laughs> so we just went on cue by talking about uh, creating that balance and harmony. And I want to finish the segment by saying thank you for being on our real talk 
Heal Talk Tuesday with Lisa. Thanks it's so such a joy having you. I appreciate that. Literally. Hopefully you'll have me back. <laughs> of course I will have you back. We've got so much Let's more see, yeah. to do. It'll be fun. And uh, so what is one thing that you, if I were to ask, what are the books that have influenced you mm. in your life? Uh, to finish, maybe we can share that so our viewers can go and get that book. Absolutely. The yes. Number one book, the number one book that I think uh, just molded my mindset and mm. helped me understand me uh, first uh, is by Napoleon Hill and it's Think and Grow Rich. Yes. Number one. And that book cannot be read once. It's got to be read 50 times for you to really get it. I remember I bought one and I had one in my car. I had one in my bedroom. I had one in my office. And my daughter, who was only probably like nine at the time, she looked at every, and she pulled the book up. She goes, Mom, are you reading this book again? I said, yes. She goes, didn't you get it the first few times you read it? I was like, no, some things you just need to go over and over because right. you're a different version each time. Each time you read it. So you find a nugget that was never there before or you thought it was never there. And any time I had a bad day, I kid you not, Lisa, I would open up randomly any page of that mm. book. I would read it. I go, oh, this was exactly what I needed to read. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> That's what okay. We were talking about Nap Napoleon Hill. Hill. Yes. <laughs> think and Grow Rich. That's the very first book. Um, and then the second book that I read, uh, I think when I launched my office in Pasadena, much needed, much needed. And it was Failing Forward by John Maxwell. Wow. Um, one of the most important books for anybody who's career driven, who's anybody who is business oriented, or you just have a job and you just try to, you know, climb the corporate ladder. One of the best books, best books, because it'll teach you um, how to voice yourself. It'll teach you what things mean to you, how to take it in a constructive way so that way uh, your mind does not get in your way. Because mm. I think that's one of the biggest problems for most people is that our minds, we get in our own way. We cause the traffic. We're the ones that are in the lane, that are in our way. We and sabotage just, ourselves yes, more than anyone else. And you just gotta learn how to get else. out of your way. And that book right. will teach you how to do that. Um, and the last book, again, is by Napoleon Hill. It was profound uh, in my life. And it was um, uh, a book called Interview with the Devil. Oh, wow. Okay. It's profound. You, you have to be ready for that book. You, you can't, it's just, it's huge. And it just talks about society and cultures and people and how uh, different communities are all made up of same people. And it's the habits. We're all one. Yes. And it's, you know, that book specifically taught me that our relationships are based on what we teach others. So if you treat me a certain way, I teach you to treat me that way. I teach you to do something or I teach you not to do something. And if I put up with it and I'm okay with it, and it continues to happen. But sometimes, like you said, we self-sabotage. So we don't know what we're doing that's causing that reaction or that uh, relationship to be where it is. And if we're the ones that are causing it, that are okaying the unhealthiness to be there, then we got to get out of our own way. We got to have that faith. We got to have that courage. We got to have the belief in the process um, that you're changing. And if the people don't like it around you, then maybe you need to disengage with some change of the people. Your, change your environment. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest things that we talk about is that mirror work. You know, it's sometimes we can blame, we can find yeah. fault at others, and it's just like, let's put a mirror. It's yeah. like yeah. The, the gun. Yeah, and you don't know you're doing it. That's the You thing. know about the gun, right? Yeah. The triggers in the your hand. The triggers in the hand that as this is pointing, mm -hmm. the two are pointing, two are pointing at you. Mm -hmm. So what we fire at others, we're also firing twice right. as much right. towards us. Right. And with that... Um, finish this sentence. Virginia is powerful. <laughs> <laughs> Influential. <laughs> Thank you um, for being here. Um, and I hope this segment was beneficial to you. And I look forward to seeing you next week where we will talk about Christmas, joys, family, and starting our new year with prosperity. God bless, and may the universal light be with you. Awesome. That's beautiful. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, hi, Silva. Okay. So...
My computer <laughs> is having an incredible time. <laughs> this is one of those bloopers that we're still on, but we're not. Right, right. It just, first it wouldn't want to get on, then it doesn't want to get on. I know. <laughs> okay. Going. Close the program. There we go. <laughs> and then, and <laughs> thank you for all of you for being here. And then it says, and, <laughs> and again. Mm-hmm.